that brings us quickly to our final speaker, Associate Professor David Beatty, who's a chemist working at the newly established Future Industries Institute at the University of South Australia. He spends his time trying to juggle the demands of curiosity-driven research and industry-engaged research. He says it's like trying to have his cake and eat it too. Or maybe like trying to have Ethel in your... No. David, please come. Yes, I am the devil. Okay. Moving on from tales of destruction of industrial chemistry, I'll talk to you about some chemistry and, and hopefully not make you throw things at me. Now, it won't take too long of me speaking to, for you to realize I'm not from around these parts. I'm from Adelaide. No, uh, I'm Scottish. And um, the, my nationality has informed my choice of, of a hero to talk to you about tonight. I'm going to talk to you about a very famous Scot. His name is William Ramsey. Not Gordon Ramsay. This is not the kitchen story. This is the Labora story. And there's going to be substantially less swearing in the next 10 minutes than there would be in an episode of Gordon's uh, Kitchen Nightmares. Um, but who was William Ramsay? William Ramsay was a chemist, and he was a Nobel Prize winning chemist. So he was pretty big um, in the area of chemistry. Um, but what about the man himself? Let's go back a little bit. Let's, let's not get straight into the Nobel Prize winning stuff. Um, he was a, a young boy in, in Glasgow, growing up in Glasgow. But science was in his background, um, both on his father's side, um, in the area of dyes and dye making, uh, and his, on his mother's side, in the area of medicine. He also had an uncle who was at UCL working as the professor of geology. But if there's any physicists in the audience, you'd probably not think that was science. So we won't count that as part of his scientific background. So how did this young man growing up in Glasgow get interested in chemistry? Well, it was, it was by accident, quite literally. The poor boy broke his leg playing soccer when he was eight years old. And uh, the only thing that could divert his curiosity and his, and his uh, intellect when he was convalescing was the chemistry set that his father bought him. Now, back in the 1800s, chemistry sets were interesting. <laughs> Not the kind of sanitized stuff you can buy in the shops these days. This is sulfur, phosphorus, sulfuric acid. You know, stuff you can make fireworks with and essentially kill yourself if you weren't too careful. <laughs> but luckily, he survived. Um, and uh, he took that love of chemistry with him when he went to university. He went to university in Glasgow. And uh, he wasn't going to study chemistry initially, but people think he was influenced by a, a, one of the professors there, a chap called William Thompson, who most, chem most, most chemists, most scientists know better as Lord Kelvin of the temperature unit fame. Um, but it was a near, it was a near run thing. Um, he almost didn't study chemistry because uh, Professor Thompson's uh, assistant told him in the 1800s, chemistry's a dead subject. There's nothing more to discover with chemistry. You should think about something else. Um, luckily, he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't decide to abandon chemistry. He studied it. He went into his PhD in Germany. And he came back to, to Glasgow to be an academic. And uh, he actually started working on some very interesting chemistry. Um, chemistry of extracting molecules from plants, uh, things that we call alkaloids. Now, I'd say alkaloids are probably chemistry's greatest gift to, greatest gift to humanity. Um, caffeine, morphine, cocaine. Um, and uh, interestingly, in this area of chemistry, he, he, he recruited one of his first and most famous PhD students, a young chap called Dobby. Now, he wasn't imbibing his own chemicals and hallucinating the presence of Harry Potter's elf protector. Um, this was a young chap called James Dobby, who did actually go on to do some really good stuff with alkaloids and uh, actually extracted codeine from opium. So, again, lots of cool chemicals. Um, but that wasn't the area he stayed in. That wasn't the area that he pursued and actually won his Nobel Prize in. Um, he actually changed his research field when he went to, down to London. He got a position at University College London um, and uh, started working with gases, uh, looking at atoms and molecules in the gas phase. And that was where his Nobel Prize was, was born, if you like. But it, was, it, was born of, it wasn't just his discovery that gave him his Nobel Prize. Um, once he, uh, shortly after he started his research down in London, uh, he attended a seminar that was given by a chap called Lord Raleigh. Um, who was a famous physicist from Cambridge at the time. Uh, now, Raleigh was also very interested in gases. And uh, he had actually done some work where he uh, tried to isolate nitrogen from air. And he discovered that the density of the nitrogen he got from air was di different to the density from the nitrogen he'd he could get by evolving it from a chemical reaction. 
And he surmised correctly that uh, there was something else in the gas that he'd, he'd isolated from air that wasn't nitrogen. There was something there that he couldn't actually react out of the air to leave the nitrogen behind. And he, he chatted with Ramsey about this, uh, and Ramsey agreed that they, they both decided to go off go to their respective laboratories and try and isolate and characterize this. So they, they went off, they did their experiments, and within a, within a short period of time of each other, they'd both been able to isolate enough of this material to, uh, to say, yes, we've got something different. But Ramsey was the better experimentalist, and he'd been able to get enough to actually characterize and confirm that this was a brand new chemical element. It was completely unreactive at a different mass uh, and different properties to anything that anyone had found before. And he, they, 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 they gave it a new name. And they gave it the name of argon, which sounds really heroic and Greek. But argon actually is the Greek word for lazy git. Um, and it was because of its, its lack of reactivity, the fact that it just wouldn't, it wouldn't react with anything they could, they could find. So that was, uh, that was argon. It had been established, it had been found. So they published the work together. And, uh, and this is what gave Ramsey his, his dinner with the Swedish king and queen. In fact, in 1904, um, it earned Raleigh the Nobel Prize in physics, and it also earned Ramsey the Nobel Prize in chemistry in the same year. Now, that's not as dodgy as it might sound. Um, Raleigh had done a lot of work leading up to that point in gas density studies, and Ramsey went on from there to find lots of other elements, lots of other chemical elements, brand new ones that no one had ever found before, that were similar in character. Uh, we call them the lazy gases, no. They're called the noble gases. Um, argon, helium, krypton, xenon, uh, radon, lots of other, uh, this, this whole entire new family in, in, in the periodic table. Now, for those who aren't chemists, the periodic table is, is, is the chemical map that we use to navigate the chemical universe. It's our way of arranging the elements, the atoms that we know about based on their reactivity, their, uh, their mass, their electron density, and all sorts of other things. But uh, Ramsey had found this, this entirely new region uh, of, of this, this region of tranquility, you could call it, this, the noble gases. Um, noble gases, they called them because you know, they, didn't, they didn't want to associate with any of the other chemical elements. They were a bit too hoity-toity and aloof. Um, although if, you, if they'd been named these days, you'd have probably called them the meh gases. Um, but back then, it was, it was aloof, it was noble. And that's, that's, uh, that's, what, uh, that's what they called them. So, as well as finding this new area of the, of the periodic table, they actually allowed us to understand a lot about chemistry. They allowed us to understand the importance of the electron number in, in atoms and how that affected reactivity. You went a little bit heavier in your, in your atom, you got a, one more electron, you got the explosive, dangerous alkali metals, sodium and potassium. You got a little bit lighter, uh, you take one electron away, uh, and you get the toxic, hazardous, dangerous uh, halogens, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So this, this, this region of tranquility in the periodic table was, was completely new, and it was, it, was, it was wonderful. But these days, we know the, uh, the, the noble gases uh, from a fairly, fairly different perspective. We know them in terms of lighting, gas discharge lighting, neon lighting. We know helium because we fill them with balloons and then inhale them and try and sound like Elmo from Sesame Street. Um, although I, I, I have to public service announcement, do not do this. We have too little helium in the universe, in the world. We need to save it for scientific instruments and things. Don't try and be Elmo. Um, but yeah, we, we all know about the noble gases these days. We, we, they're, they're around us in, in devices and, and lighting and all sorts of different places. So that was, that was how he earned his Nobel Prize. Um, but this, this, this event this evening, this, is, this isn't just about the science, this is about why these people are important to us, these, why these people are heroes. And uh, uh, Ramsey was a, a, a chemist of great renown, and uh, for me personally, I, I was lucky enough to win a fellowship that was named after him when I was a young scientist in the UK. So from a very personal perspective, I've got a lot to thank Ramsey's legacy for. It gave me my, my first step in the academic ladder. Um, but more generally, Ramsey did science in a way that I think that we should all try and uh, well, look at and, and try and, and, and emulate. He was a very collaborative scientist. Um, I think collaboration is, is, is at the root of the best science that's done these days. Um, he, was, uh, he collaborated with many different uh, nationalities of scientists. He, he spoke many languages, and he did a lot of really good collaborative work. But his, his, his work with Raleigh was a really, really great example of collaboration in science. Um, it was a joint idea. They both went off and found this material together. Even though Ramsey was the only one that had found enough to actually do something with it, as soon as he realized that Raleigh had been able to find it at the same time, he immediately suggested co-publication to work together to put something out there. Um, 
hopefully all scientists have got that level of mutual respect and trust for each other and work in that way, but uh, that's, that's an aspiration. I think we should all try and uh, model. Um, but also, uh, he realized that, uh, and uh, I, I, I hesitate to mention this given the lovely example of industrial chemistry we've just heard about, um, he understood that uh, knowledge generation for fundamental curiosity purpose driven purposes is the same kind of knowledge generation as you can apply to the real world. And that scientists have a, a mission, a job really, to try and make sure that they contribute to something more than just academic journals, to actually make a difference to society. I, I don't think that in this day and age, scientists have got the luxury of time to sit and contemplate their navel while the rest of the world deals with the, the challenges of growing population, aging population, climate change, environmental degradation. There's, there isn't really time for us to sit in our ivory towers and, and not engage and actually make a difference to the world. And Ramsey knew this. He, he did a lot of work in, in the area of uh, making a difference to society. He knew that industry and academia should work together to create an innovation economy and to drive society to a better place. And uh, for all of these reasons and for his great discoveries in chemistry, that's why Ramsey is one of my heroes. And thank you. <laughs>